Five years ago, Mercedes-AMG introduced the AMG GT sports car. It was designed to take on the best from Porsche, from Ferrari, from Lamborghini, from McLaren. And it was also a vehicle designed to change people's perception of AMG from being just about the brute muscle that you get from under the hood to actually delivering a car that could handle extremely well on the track. Now, fast forward a couple years, and I'm standing by this beast right here. This is the AMG GT four-door. That's right, four doors have been added to their two-door GT sports car. And this is no ordinary sedan because it also has the most powerful production V8 engine that Mercedes-AMG has ever put in a car. This, we're talking 630 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque. So to test out this brand new four-door beast, I'm just outside of Stevenson, Washington with the rest of the members of the Automotive Video Association for our annual Best Performance Car and Best Performance SUV Awards. And the big question I want answered, is this four-door AMG GT 63S truly a four-door version of the AMG GT? That's what we're here to find out. Now looking at the rest of the design of the AMG GT 63, you can see this is just one incredibly gorgeous car. It really has an amazing presence to it. And I actually do see some hint of the AMG GT two door in this thing when I look at the front fascia. Uh, the grill of course is gonna have the signature AMG grill. This is the Pan America grill with the vertical slats that go throughout the grill uh, with the very large uh, three-pointed star in the center. These full LED headlights are gonna be standard equipment on the AMG GT. And then of course you can see down here, very large functional uh, air intakes down there because with this big engine, you're going to need big cooling. And honestly, for a four door, it looks incredibly low and wide because it is. And it will really fool you into thinking this is the AMG GT. It just looks exactly like that vehicle from the front. It's very low and wide, which is extremely important when you're trying to design a vehicle like this. Now, looking at the side profile, I'm seeing quite a few things. This car is long. At 199 inches long, this is about seven inches longer than a comparable Mercedes AMG E63. So this is seven inches longer than an E-Class. Its wheelbase is 116 inches long. It's like 0.6 inches longer than the E-Class. So again, Mercedes made this bigger to give it a much bigger presence to it. This slots above the E-Class, but of course below their flagship S-Class. Now the wheels, how can I not talk about the wheels? These are an optional 21 inch wheel for $3,000. And honestly, it is a throwback to the old wheels that you found on the 90s Mercedes-Benz S-Class V12 models. I absolutely hate them. I think they should have honestly stayed in the 90s. But again, there are multiple wheel options, so let me know in the comments below if you guys like these wheels. You can also get them with a black finish if you'd like. If you peek behind these little teeny tiny spokes, there's actually a yellow brake caliper. This one here doesn't have the carbon ceramic brakes uh, that are an option, they're like 10 grand extra. Uh, these are still vented and cross-drilled rotors. Obviously, with a car like this, you're going to need beefy brakes. Now, all AMG GT models, the four-door, will come with rear wheel steering. That's actually standard equipment. The, rears will, the rear wheels will turn in the opposite direction of the front wheels in low speeds to, again, help with the turning radius. And then they'll turn in the same direction uh, during high-speed maneuvers to help make this thing handle better. Now, at the back, you really see the family resemblance to the AMG GT two-door for this vehicle. The taillights have a similar look. My tester has the, uh, the active rear wing spoiler. This will pop up at higher speeds, or you can also push a button in the dash that will make the wing pop up. If you guys don't like this wing setup, Mercedes-AMG also offers a fixed wing, uh, kind of like a wing-type spoiler for, like, $3,000 extra. You can also have it in finished in carbon fiber. Now down here at the lower fascia, obviously you can see signature AMG quad exhaust tips with this rear diffuser. It looks fantastic, but they actually aren't connected to the pipes, but this is an AMG. So let's take a listen of that V8. Now, unfortunately, they limit you to only rev it to about 4,000 when it's in park, but oh my God, you can't beat the sound of the chainsaws, the gargling chainsaws that this thing makes with the crackles and pops. So I can't wait to drive this thing, basically. Now, the one thing about the GT four-door is it looks like a two-door, um, or it tries to look like a sedan, but when you lift this up, it's actually a, a sport back. So again, kind of like the Kia Stinger, kind of like the Audi A7. And when you look at the cargo area, this is where you get a huge advantage with the fact that this is a hatchback. Mercedes-AMG says you get around 16 cubic feet of space. If you fold down those seats, you get around 47 cubic feet of space. That's roughly matching that of something like a Honda Civic hatchback. So again, very good amounts of space. I love all the 
plush carpeting they put in here. And then if you look underneath the floor here, there's actually a little bit more storage under here. So if you need to hide something in the cargo area, you can. So once you're done drooling over the exterior of the AMG GT four door, let's hop into the inside and see what all the fuss is about. Remember, this is a Mercedes product. The first thing I want to talk about here is the key fob for the vehicle. It's a more unique AMG key. I actually like how small it is. Just traditional simple buttons, lock, unlock, you can open up the trunk and then there's a panic uh, mode, of course. But as you approach the door handle, you can see there is a little area right there where you can touch that with your finger. That will lock the doors for you when you push that and then the mirrors will electrically fold in to unlock it. Just touch the back, there's a sensor, and that will unlock the door for you now. <laughs> Look at this interior, this gray exterior with this beige uh, Disegno interior. This is the upgraded interior package for like 2,500 bucks. It looks incredible. Just a dark color on the outside with this white interior is phenomenal. Now, unfortunately, white interiors also mean they will show dirt. This one here is showing a little bit of dirt, those poor carpets. So keep in mind, I would probably get a rubber floor mat for this vehicle. You can see this beautiful uh, dark or the brown wood that's a matte finish with the actual exposed graining. It looks real, it feels real. Leather is basically everywhere. There's actually some felt in the door pockets over there. So this interior is absolutely gorgeous. Very befitting of a car that has a six figure price tag. Now getting into the interior of the GT four door, it definitely sits low. I feel like I'm sitting in a sports car as opposed to just a sports sedan. Uh, the hood, you can see there's two very distinctive bulges in the center here to remind you that you're driving a, a special car. And then when you want to shut the door, it has a very solid thunk. Despite the fact that this has kind of just a frameless uh, window here, Oh yeah, that, that adds to the impression of quality. Now, obviously getting inside, you're greeted with a typical Mercedes interior. Let's start the vehicle up first. Just put your foot on the brake and push this button here to fire up the engine. And this is what the engine started up in quiet mode. So that's what the exhaust in quiet mode. Even in quiet mode, it sounds amazing, but wait until you guys listen to this. I'm gonna switch the drive mode over here to Sport Plus. Actually, let's go to race. That basically opens up the baffle and the exhaust for the powerful sound. <laughs> oh my God, I'm gonna get into so much trouble driving this thing. Anyways, looking at the rest of this cabin, let's talk about the materials because this is an expensive car. You have actual stitching here all over the dashboard. This beautiful ribbon of wood that extends across these four Vents over here, these are of course the signature uh, Mercedes vents, which feel expensive. They look great. I just love the way this interior looks in terms of the design. The door panels here, you can see very nice leather material in the upper portion, more of that wood, uh, metal door handles. The windows are one touch for all four. Didn't expect anything less. The Burmester sound system in here for $5,000. It even says Burmester high end. Sounds incredible. Honestly, I feel like they could charge more than that. I've seen some manufacturers charge like $8,000 on an upgraded sound. So at five grand, it's kind of a bargain if you could actually say it's a bargain. The steering wheel is power tilt telescoping, which is nice. It's a heated wheel, pretty much what you expected. The seats are also heated and cooled and they also massage you. So uh, that's part of an optional package. The seats are like 20 way adjustable with a three person memory. Uh, Mercedes also allows you the ability to control the passenger seat if you guys like from that button over there. But overall, this interior has m all the features that I'm expecting, even a nice heads up display over there, which is a thousand dollar option. Now the steering wheel is interesting because it's two different colors. The airbag cover cover is black and then you've got the white steering wheel with this fat rim, very nice paddles, but I wish they were mounted to the wheel in, or onto the column instead of the wheel. This of course has your Mercedes command interface here where it has these touch sensitive pads. The touch sensitive pads basically allow you to run your finger across here and you can change uh, what you see on this display. If you'd like, you can also hit the home button over here and you can actually pull up your AMG performance stuff. You can change the driver assistance stuff or show it from here. And you can even change the way the gauges look. For example, go over here to designs. Uh, I have it in the sport setting right now, which is probably my favorite. If you click it up to super sport, you can see it puts the tack front and center if you guys like that. Or you can also do a classic look which is similar to sport, but in a blue tone instead of the yellow and red tone. So I like this particular one, but the gauges here offer a very good amount of customization, kind of similar to what Audi does with their 
virtual cockpit way better than what uh, BMW is doing with their live cockpit professionals. So I like what Mercedes is doing over here with this. Now, I love how they also connect the two screens together. They're actually two separate screens. There's a black area here, but just the way it looks, it's like 24 inches of screen just looks incredible. As you can see, it's got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Not the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto though. You have to wait for the MBUX infotainment system, which this car surprisingly doesn't have the MBUX. Um, but I do like how they do put the CarPlay over there at the very top. Uh, and you can also take the entire screen if you guys want to pull up Waze. It takes up the entire screen. A lot of other systems only give you a small portion of the, scene, the screen. It's controlled via this command controller, or you can also use this touchpad here on the wheel on the right side to control it. This is not a touchscreen, as I said, you have to go for the MBUX system. Now, going back to the regular command interface, you can see all your different usual sources over here, your navigation. This is the Mercedes GPS here, which looks good. Uh, Mercedes has been using this GPS for a while, but it definitely has great graphics. It's what you expect. I still kind of prefer Audi's Google Earth, but that's kind of a preference thing. Going over here to the vehicle settings. Let me show you guys how to turn on the massage. You go to here to seat and you go over here to massage and they offer several different levels of massage. A activating massage is one of my favorites. Um, one of the best massages in the industry, pretty much up there with Volvo, um, with um, BMW. And then of course the seats themselves, they are dynamic seats, which means you can adjust it so the bolsters will turn in and out depending on whenever you turn left or right. That again makes the um, seat hug you a little bit more whenever you're driving this thing aggressively. It's pretty cool when you are driving this thing aggressively. Now, uh, the one thing this car also has, it has the energizing comfort package. What that basically does is it gives you this little setting where it'll give you all these warmth, refresh, vitality, it'll play music, it'll waft a perfume. And if you'd like, you can also go back to climate over here and you can adjust the the air ionizer. This is again kind of like what the Audi does where it, it sprays a really amazing perfume into the car and you can change the scents and it makes the interior just smell really nice in here. So those stinky smells from outside, you're shielded from it in this car because it's got an air ionizer and an air purifier. So that's what you're gonna pay for with the luxury you get with the Mercedes. When you put the car into reverse, you get a 360 camera. Uh, this is actually optional, the top down view, it's another thousand bucks. One of the best cameras in the business. It also has the ability to parallel park itself for you, uh, which is nice. This screen is just amazing. I could probably spend an entire video talking about this screen, but uh, most of the features that it's gonna give you, you're gonna really like. Just, I'm surprised that they don't give you MBUX where you can say something like, hey Mercedes, you know, take me to the nearest Starbucks. This does not have that. It has traditional voice commands, but it's not quite as intuitive as what the MBUX system is gonna give you. Now over here, surprisingly, there's actual toggles for, or for your usual controls for your climate. You have a nice little storage area over here where your cup holders are, wireless charging, your USB uh, input jack is over there. There's actually two more USBs uh, in here. Over here, you can see with the AMG GTS or GT four door, you do have a slightly different center console versus the E63. The gear shifter is over here. It's mounted in a location that is too far down for me. I actually prefer the stock that you get on the other Mercedes products. Reverse, you just kind of kick it all the way up for reverse, push it all the way down for drive, and then push the P to go into park. Um, and then you can engage the manual mode if you'd like. All these other buttons here, this controls your drive modes. You can see it cycles between sport, comfort, individual, and slippery mode. It even shows you a really great um, graphical representation whenever you change the modes. Uh, this also adjusts your um, suspension settings and whatnot. You can adjust the dampers over there, turn off the stability control, open and deploy the wing, and then turn the exhaust to the loud or quiet modes, and then turn off the start stop. This is your volume for your radio. Uh, no tuning knob in this vehicle. Instead, you're gonna be using uh, this little touchpad here. So it can be a little daunting at first. There is a steep learning curve with this car, but once you kind of live with it, uh, you will get used to it. I do like the aluminum trim here, but it does show a lot of fingerprints. So kind of keep that in mind. Opening this up, you can see two more USBs. There's an SD card. It's nice and lined with felt over there. And then over here, the glove compartment, it is a little bit on the smaller side. You can see there's the refill for the air fragrance, the ionizer and whatnot. This is surprisingly not lined with felt, but it is damped. The above me, there is just a standard size sunroof. I'm surprised Mercedes isn't offering a pano sunroof. You can see there are speakers here in the ceiling because I believe there's a total of 25 speakers in this car. So absolutely just insane. The premium Designio leather feels incredible. This is one of the nicest leather you can get in a modern production car. So overall the interior, very much what I expect from Mercedes Benz. I just think they need to update it with their MBUX infotainment system. It feels 
a little bit on the snug side in here, but you do have a nice commanding view of the road. But my gosh, this interior, it looks and feels every bit the, you know, six figure price tag that they're asking for. So being this is an AMG GT four door, I should probably test out the back seat to see if it's actually usable. Now the AMG GT doesn't even have a back seat. So it's pretty cool that they were able to throw in a back seat, although this is not the same kind of platform. But looking at this particular one here, uh, this one actually has the executive rear seat package for 3,500 bucks. It basically gives you this big center console. You have a touch screen over here that allows you to control various functions from the front. Uh, you also have these 40-40 seats, so it gets rid of the middle seat here. So remember, this is only a four-seater car. The seats back here uh, are not heated and cooled, which surprised, which surprised me, but you do have heated and cooled cup holders. You have uh, rear wireless charging in here. You have a USB, you have an actual 110 power outlet. Uh, so really for 3,500 bucks, it's a little bit Spartan for me. I'm surprised that there are no heated and cooled seats in the back here. I just think that they should have included that. Uh, what you do get is a really nice ionizer. You can control that from over here. The screen is a little bit on the small side. It looks nice, but I kind of wish that Mercedes gave you the ability to take out the screen and kind of hold it. Uh, I tested an Audi A8 earlier this year that had that feature. So overall, the back seat is a little bit on the tight side for me at 5.7. I actually couldn't find the legroom specs but the fact that it actually has a backseat is good, but just know that if you're actually looking to put people in the backseat, you might want to consider the AMG E63 instead of this. So being the most powerful production engine that AMG has ever produced, I want to first start with underneath the hood. And when you lift up the hood, obviously you're going to find a four liter twin turbocharged V8. This is the signature engine that Mercedes AMG has been using for years. And because this is a 63 model, it's actually an AMG model because it's hand built. You can see it's handcrafted by a guy in Germany, Martin Jope, Jope. So I apologize if I'm mispronouncing it, but regardless, this is the S version. So the S version gets even more power versus just the normal 63. We're talking 630 horsepower, like I said, and 664 pound feet of torque. That is just insane. And there's also a rumor that Mercedes AMG will be coming out with a 73 version of this car with even more power. So that's of course a different review. If you think this is too much power, there's also the regular 63, which has 577 horsepower. And then there's also the uh, AMG 53, which has 429 horsepower. Now this all goes out through a nine speed speed, speed shift transmission. It's an AMG tune transmission. It kind of behaves like a dual clutch. And then of course, all that power, it's not rear wheel drive. This is equipped with their Formatic Plus all wheel drive system. So. It has the ability to send all 100% of the power to the rear wheel, rear wheel so you can do full on drift mode, drift mode with this vehicle. Now, obviously in this rainy weather, I'm going to be excited that this actually does have all wheel drive. And this is also a heavy beast. It weighs around 4,700 pounds uh, as this one sits. So it's a couple hundred pounds lighter than something like a Panamera Turbo S. Uh, but as you guys should know, this is still a very much a heavy car. So my first time behind the wheel of the four-door AMG, really, I was super skeptical when Mercedes said that this was truly a four-door version of the AMG GT. And when you look at the platform, it's not actually the same platform. This is kind of based on the E-Class platform, the CLS platform. So you might be wondering, why the hell does Mercedes have two different versions or three different versions of essentially the same car? This one, you just need to know, is the longest, it's the sleekest, it's the one that's set up mostly for performance. So. It definitely feels like a sports car, more like a sports car when you drive this thing. The car feels really low. It feels really wide. You have a really good view out of the front. The hood bulges constantly remind you that you're driving something that's extremely uh, fast. The visibility from the side, this is definitely a much thicker pillar than I would like it to be. The side mirrors are mounted on the uh, wind or on the doors uh, and they provide a pretty good view. They are a little bit smaller than I would like them to be. The view out of the back though, that wing is deployed. Let me put the wing down because it really does uh, get in the way. But once you put the wing down, it actually provides a really decent view uh, out of the back, much better than what I expected. Remember, this is classified as a four door coupe by Mercedes, but it's got four doors. It's a four door sedan that has the sleekness of a coupe. But uh, I have the car in its just sports setting or I'm, I switched it over to comfort. And this is where it reminds you that you're driving a Mercedes because it's so comfortable, this car. Like it's got a really good ride quality. It's a little noisier than I would like. There's a fair amount of road noise um, in this car, but the exhaust with the active exhaust, it's nice and quiet in here. The steering is really light. The bolsters will still kind of move whenever I turn the wheel, but as you guys saw in the interior portion, you can turn that to do for two different levels or turn it off completely if you don't like how this bolster here will hug you whenever I turn the wheel. But amazingly for a car that weighs you know, almost 5,000 pounds. This thing feels light and nimble. It feels sort of quickish on its feet, on its feet. So 
they've really captured um, a much smaller feeling car in this thing versus an E63, which can feel a little bit big, especially the wagon version. I don't know if there's gonna be a CLS 63 coming to America. Right now there's only a CLS 53, which I had a chance to drive very briefly earlier this year. But overall, I like the feel of this chassis a lot more. It truly does feel a little bit different um, than the E-Class sedan, which it better be for the $50,000 price tag. Now, obviously, with this kind of a car, I'm gonna switch it over to its Sport Plus setting, and you can hear the exhaust opens up, opens up completely, basically. It's in powerful mode. The transmission shifts harsher, the suspension got firmer, and uh, I'm pretty much excited to drive this thing. So I'll, I'll do a launch control later on, but let's just actually just drive it and see what it's like. So I decided I'm just gonna show you guys the launch control really quick. Now to do that, you put the car into race mode here, and all you have to do is just floor the brake and hit the accelerator and it'll start doing some crazy things. Oh, f <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and that was zero to 60 in about 2.9 seconds. And it's so easy to do the launch control in this thing. Oh, oh my God. What an insane car. This is insane. This is absolutely incredible. <laughs> the fact that this car weighs almost 5,000 pounds and you can get to 60 in under three seconds you know, it's like the E63 wasn't crazy enough. So Mercedes said, you know what, screw it. We're gonna give you a car that's even more crazy. <laughs> I could seriously get into a lot of trouble with this car. Now, let's put it just into a regular sport setting here. Sport setting is kind of like a little bit more than just a regular comfort setting. It's like, I guess Mercedes AMG would say this is the normal setting. Um, but really, when you start finding some corners in this car, I'm actually gonna go back into Sport Plus because the steering gets to a good weight in Sport Plus and that's kind of what I prefer it at. I'm gonna go through this tunnel here, I'm gonna floor it. <laughs> Listen to those cracks and those burbles from the exhaust. freaking kidding me the f the mad folks at mercedes amg they sure know how to make a car that will make grown men or grown women just giggle like like children this is such an insane car but <laughs> but even in sport plus i'm noticing the ride quality is not bad this is not all overly far firm ride quality even with these big wheels and tires but you do notice the fair amount of road noise and wind noise that this car has so that's something to keep in mind now, just because we can, we're gonna do the race start again. Floor it. <laughs> the blood is like rushing to the back of my head. <laughs> wow. I mean, I would love to race this thing against a Tesla Model S P or 100D or performance. Like, although I know the Tesla's faster, this gives you the same kind of feeling, and it's just amazing with this formatic all-wheel drive. It just puts the power down. There's no waiting, there's no slippage. Even though the road is slightly damp out here, I have complete confidence in this car. I think that's what's really important about a modern day performance car. And the transmission, this is the nine speed speed shift. It responds really well to the paddles when I pull them. Oh! <laughs> God, I could do this all day long, but I don't need to get another speeding ticket. <laughs> but anyways, getting out of race mode here and just going into comfort. I mean, I'm sitting here getting a massage. The ride quality gets 
a little bit softer. The road noise is still there, but the visibility is good. This is the true definition of a four-door GT car, and it's exactly what I expected from a Mercedes AMG. I'm finding very little faults with this thing. I mean, it handles extremely well for something this big. Nothing, I mean, it's not like Porsche 911, like, great. I haven't, I have driven the latest Panamera, but not like a Turbo S model, which honestly the Panamera feels big for what it is. So this is truly a rival to the Panamera. I'm really excited to drive the upcoming 8 Series Grand Coupe, obviously. But there's just so much to like with this car. Oh, I'm spitting over it. I'm very much, this could very well be one of the most per impressive new cars that I've driven this year. So a few years ago, when I first drove the AMG GT two-door, I was simply blown away. This is a car that really changed my perception of Mercedes AMG because it turned the brand into a serious sports car brand. I mean, usually they've always been known for brute muscle and all that horsepower, but they really couldn't handle all that well. And the two-door version really set the bar on a much higher benchmark. So to see Mercedes AMG try to apply that to a four-door. I was really skeptical when the four-door AMG came out, but after driving this thing, I have to say, they really have captured a, a lot of the magic of the two-door in obviously a more practical package. The problem with the four-door for me isn't necessarily the fact that it has four doors. Remember, this car doesn't necessarily ride on the same platform as the two-door. It rides on a shared platform with the E63. It has the usual Mercedes-Benz strengths with its amazingly luxurious interior, the quick acceleration. I mean, zero to 60 in under three seconds is just insane. And those massaging seats, the way it looks, this car really makes a statement. And really against competitors like the Porsche Panamera or the upcoming BMW 8 Series Grand Coupe, this is easily going to hold uh, a candle to all of those competitors whenever they do decide to come out, especially that BMW, uh, when, uh, whenever BMW decides to bring that one out. Now, coming to the pricing of this vehicle, this is where I have a problem with the AMG GT four-door. The 53 model, the lowest level in the totem pole, starts at $99,000. Uh, this one here starts at $161,000. It's about 30 grand more than the regular 63. Remember, this is the 63S. At $161,000, this is $50,000 more expensive than a Mercedes AMG E63 S. And to me, unless you really want the look of this thing, you want the hatchback capability, um, the fact that this is now a four-door GT, although by the platform it's really not, you're gonna get most of the performance in the E63 S for 50 grand less. So it's really gonna come down to if you think the looks of this car is worth that extra 50 grand and it's about 0.3 seconds faster. Again, if that's important to you, that's a bragging right. Now this one here obviously is not $160,000. Let me pull out the Monroney because Mercedes, as you guys know, has a crap ton of options. Let me read off most of them to you. Um, $720 for the paint, $2,500 for that beige leather interior, which is fa fantastic. $1,500 for the carbon fiber under the hood. $3,200 for those wheels. I really think they're ugly. I would not get these wheels, but hey, if that's your taste, that's, that's perfectly fine. The head-up display is $1,300. The Designio headliner is $900. The Burmester sound system, that's the most expensive one at $4,500. It's probably worth it. It sounds really damn good. Um, the executive rear seat package is $3,500. The energizing comfort package where it wafts that sweet smelling perfume in there. That's kind of like what the Germans are known for. I would easily pay that. Um, $2,500 for the driver assistance package. Another $500 for the 360 camera. And $1,000 for the Worth and Comfort package. And then of course, $1,000 for a gas and guzzler tax because this is rated at 15 city. 20 on the highway. All in, we're looking at an ass tested price of $184,000, including the destination charge, which is really an eye watering amount of money. And keep in mind, this one here, you could option it in to be over $200,000 if you wanted to, because it's missing the carbon ceramic brakes and it's also missing the fancy, you know, Designio matte finished blue paint that I've seen this thing painted in, which looks gorgeous. So keep in mind, this is an expensive car. But if you guys have the cash to afford it, it's literally one of the most desirable new cars that you can find today. Now, obviously I can't do an RPM rating on this car because I've only had it for a couple of hours. So stay tuned for a full or an update video whenever I do get one of these to test in the DC area. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2019 Mercedes AMG GT 63S. That's a tongue twister. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.